Today I want to talk about something very important, and it's on the topic of your black repertoire against 1d4. And this might just seem like a bit of a random topic, like okay yeah, against d4 I play my whatever opening, like I don't know, maybe the Queen's Gambit declined, so maybe like the Queen's Gambit accepted, perhaps even you go for more of a hypermodern opening, you play something such as the King's Indian Defense. But there is something that you need to be quite careful about regardless of what opening that you play versus 1d4. And it's taking into account this concept of move orders. This is very prevalent for example when white stars with one knight of three. And for a long time, I didn't realize until maybe I was already like 1800 feet eh, how there's a lot of transpositional possibility, like how openings that start with one knight of three, white can eventually play d4 and then essentially turn into an opening that we would get that actually starts with one d4. And to illustrate, I remember this very well, like there was one game I had, I was playing against a guy who was around my age, he's an FM now, but around the time he was, you know, I think 2000, around 200 points or so higher rated than me. And what I did in this game, by the way, to for context, I was a Nimzo Indian player, so against D4 I would try and aim for the Nimzo Indian, we had a couple games where he played white and I had played this against him, but in this game after knight 3 knight 6 what he did was he played G3. And for a person like myself who plays the sort of Nimzo Indian type stuff, I should probably play a move like E6 and against bishop G2 maybe go like D5. And that this would, you know, be well within the scope of my normal black repertoire against 1d4. However, in this game, I remember seeing the dart base or something that, you know, oh, white's most, sorry, black's most common move against g3 is to play g6. And I was completely clueless about any sort of possibilities of white eventually going d4 and then playing a d4 opening where I have now committed to a kingside fianchetto, which I would never do when playing against 1d4. I basically just thought coming back to this position that all oh, you just copy whatever white does and you'll be fine, not really once again understanding this important nuance. And so essentially what happened was after the next few moves when my opponent played d4 and c4, we had transposed into an essentially not quite a, I'd say King's Indian Fianchetto variation once black plays d6, but I think in the game I remember playing c5 and we end up sort of transposing to a Fianchetto Benoni type position eventually after I played e6 and takes, but again this, this really wasn't within the scope of my repertoire and from a practical perspective I really did just make a mistake going into this whole thing because now like I mean generally speaking you should play openings you know especially in like classical over the board games where it's not like boots games where often you can just get away with knowing an opening on a very shallow level. If you do that in classical, sometimes you can get away with it, but especially against stronger opponents, it's a very risky sort of uh, thing to do. But even so, however, coming back to, like, say, whatever defense you play against 1d4, even if, like, say, you follow the general scheme of development that you would normally play against 1 knight of 3 that you would against d4, even then you have to sort of be a bit careful to not end up in a position that you really just don't like. For example, one of the best examples I can think of is against, say, knight of 3 in this position where white avoids an Imzo Indian. Black very often will go for the queen's Indian defense, playing b6, and against the main line g3 where white opts for a kingside fianchetto. Black, generally speaking, has two options. One of them is to go bishop b7, this is a very solid one, but another option is bishop a6, which is a very sort of ambitious move, immediately putting pressure on the c4 pawn. And I thought about playing this variation before for the black pieces, because it definitely appealed to me on some sort of level. However, one sort of problem that I realized with it, and one thing that definitely stopped me from playing this whole variation, was that I realized against knight f3, if I tried to play some sort of thing like against c4, e6, g3, b6, bishop g2, that now in this position, bishop a6 doesn't really make any sense at all, and if I were to play bishop b7 after d4, I would essentially be tricked into a variation that I didn't want to play. And also just to briefly explain why bishop a6 doesn't make much sense in this position, at the very least why I can just sort of play d3 temporarily, and this bishop kind of looks stupid pointing at this pawn on c4, which is once again why bishop b7 is probably the best move here, but then again these would lead to positions which if we were to play bishop a6 in this variation are not really in our repertoire. And you could maybe argue, oh, you can just study both then, so in the worst case scenario, you can, you know, pull out bishop b7 in this position, right? But personally, I was never really that type of person. I was sort of lazy. I'm like, I don't want to have to prepare like a whole another variation in my opening repertoire just in case someone plays one knight of three. I want my normal repertoire in its like 
fungus form, I guess you could say, to really work against whatever move order white throws at us. And to give another example of a very popular open against one d4 that doesn't quite work the same against one knight f3 is going to be the Grunfeld defense after c4, g6, knight c3, and so bishop g7, allowing the king's Indian, we're going to play d5. A very direct and confrontational defense against one d4, also probably, in my opinion, one of the objectively strongest ones and most difficult for white to really deal with. And of course, one of the main variations you have to keep in mind of the Grunfeld is when white takes, they go for the so-called exchange variation, and black gets this sort of structure when, when they take on the c3 square, they can now play bishop g7, c5, and gain quick counterplay against this sort of structure. However, one of the issues, so to speak, about the Grunfeld is that, again, it's not so easy to play against this sort of English knight of free stuff. We're saying this position, white plays c4, black plays g6, in line with the normal sort of setup, now against knight c3, what black has to be quite careful of doing is not playing bishop g7 because then after e4, d6, d4, they have now transposed to a king's Indian defense which is nothing like the Grunfeld at all and is an absolute nightmare for any Grunfeld player to go into. They just, they don't know how to play these types of positions. And so you might point out in this position like Sam, why can't we play d5 then? And well, that's a good question, you sort of can, but the problem is you sort of get a bastardized version of the normal Grunfeld after takes takes, because now with the pawn on d2 instead of d4, you have to understand that taking is a lot less appealing in a lot of lines. For example, I mean, just this position alone, you don't really want to take because then just b takes c3. From a completely positional point of view, once again without the pawn being on d4 and on d2 instead, white has just more or less captured towards the center, slightly improving their structure, while black can't really play bishop g7 and c5, taking aim at any sort of weaknesses, or it's not really that weak, but weaknesses I guess you could say on the d4 square. And so for these reasons, generally speaking, it's a lot more difficult for black to really equalize in the anti-Grunfeld as opposed to once again these normal sort of Grunfeld positions where white has already played d4. Like concretely speaking, one annoying line that I can show you in these variations where white plays h4, and after bishop g7 now what we're going to do is h5 is a possibility but actually a much stronger option is to actually just play e4, and now after knight takes c3 you might be thinking we're going to play b takes c3 but actually no, what we're going to do is play d takes c3, and now we enter this sort of weird endgame line which is an improved version actually of a very similar variation which can occur in this position, but essentially what we're saying is that with h4 and bishop g7 inserted, now white can gain an improved version because there's some small theoretical like nuances where black plays f6 in this position and then e5 and having the bishop on this diagonal is more useful than on g7 where you don't really want to play f6 right because it's sort of shut in. Which makes these endgames quite appealing not only from a, uh, you know, objective point of view but also a practical point of view, I quite like this for white. And you know, if you're a Grunfeld player and you're watching this and you're thinking, well this is lame, I don't want to go into this, then you're probably going to have to learn something else against say knight of 3 and c4, such as maybe playing c5 and one line that resembles the sort of Grunfeld and law is one where you go d5 immediately and then after takes takes you go g6 and it does somewhat resemble the Grunfeld, it's definitely not better in my opinion than these anti-Grunfeld lines, not that they're necessarily horrible but at least from a stylistic point of view I've never really felt they would suit most Grunfeld players I guess you could say. And you know we could do this sort of comparison for every single opening against 1d4, I mean just for starters like something like the Alban counter gambit. Obviously you can't do this if white does something simple like not even play knight of 3 on move 1 but even just on move 2 here where it's like now you sort of have to play a completely different opening, you, you can't play your normal sort of rubbish with uh, e5. Not that it's something that uh, you should even really be wanting to play in the first place but of course something to keep in mind right? Another quick one that comes to mind is also say the Benoni where against uh, you know, d4, c4, you can get it like this. Or if we want to be like specific about names, the, the Mon Benoni, whereas uh, another variation of the Benoni, maybe the Old Benoni you could call it, is with white playing knight f3 here, and now after c5, d5, this is definitely more characteristic of what we'd call an Old Benoni, where white has not yet committed their pawn on c2 to the c4 square, which leaves them open with this option of mean e6 with actually knight c3, and again black is sort of not getting the sort of positions they want, sure you can study this, but ultimately like when you play Amon Benoni, this is a very different opening to this one. One potential solution by the way for this player, the, the Alban counter gambit player, they're, they're, a, they're a lost cause, but 
for the moment only play a one solution maybe it could be to play g6 and again c4 then to play c5 and now after d5 you can eventually sort of transpose into some sort of Benoni. But I want to, you know, finish up, because again, I can't talk about every single opening in the world. Well, I could, but the video would be an hour long, and only so many of you actually want to see that. But with my repertoire, one thing that I sort of realized was that for a long time, or not a long time, maybe like a year or so, I played, okay, first of all, I played the Nimzo Indian, but alongside this against Knight of 3, you sort of need another opening, and what I decided to play was uh, actually the Bogo Indian defense. However, again, coming back to this position after Knight of 3, Knight F6, C4, well, of course, now, I, if I want to go for this sort of Bogo Indians type stuff, I should play E6, since after D4, now we can transpose back into that sort of territory. However, what happens if White does not play D4 and instead go say, Knight C3 in this position? And the sort of problem that I ran into eventually was that you couldn't play bishop b4 and again if white plays d4 we're very happy to see this this is like a normal Nimzo Indian position god bless but if white does not go d4 and play into our hands which they most often will not do if they have you know played this one knight of removal order what they will very often do is instead go queen c2 and this was a very annoying anti Nimzo line that I just could not crack and quite frankly, like this is why a lot of strong players in this position, they, they just don't play bishop b4. Granted, there are some, but definitely it's not as popular as what, in my opinion, is the objectively best move in this position to play d5. But the problem is, at least the one that I had, was that this was not compatible with all of my black repertoire after white playing d4. Like, sure, there are some sidelines where white can play e3. This is the other big alternative, I guess, in this position. Like, this I'd be fine with. But after d4, you have to understand that if you're a Bogo Indian player after knight of 3, like, you can get those queen's gambit decline positions after d5, knight c3, but I didn't play d5 in this position, right? I played bishop b4 check, a completely different opening. So, the dilemma I was faced with in this position was, do I go for an opening that, like, I just don't like? Like, these positions are essentially, by the way, uh, what we'd have in the Nimzo Indian where white plays queen c2, but you have to understand these positions. Like, you have to understand the purpose of what's going on in these openings. Like, the reason that black is sort of doing okay in these queen c2 nimzo positions, well, first of all, what was white's idea, right? The idea is to play a3, black to take, gain the bishop pair, but black has compensation because they can quickly open up the center. Like, for example, one line is to go in this position d5, and a very modern line, so take on c4 immediately, go b6, bishop a6, c5. Very often you play c5, even if it's a pawn sacrifice, and you're able to open up the center, use your lead in development to compensate for the fact that you don't have the bishop here. Whereas in these positions, right, white hasn't played d4. Their pawn is all the way back on d2, which means that even if black gives up the bishop here, it's a lot more difficult to really exploit the fact that, that black has a lead in development, because let's say after something like castles, a3 takes takes, like, sure, black can play d5, but it's not really going anywhere compared to these other variations, because after e3, it's like, you can take, take, but again, with the pawn back on d2, there is no, like, way that black can quickly blast open the position and, you know, exploit white sort of lag in development, which really means that black has to play in a much more slow way, and that's something that black, sorry, white rather, is completely fine with, since they have the long-term advantage of the bishop pair, and yeah, I just... I mean, maybe it's not terrible, these positions, like, don't get me wrong, but it just wasn't something that I I personally liked or enjoyed going into. Which is why, you know, this was my repertoire up until maybe, like, 20, mid-2017, whereas these days, against the Nimzo Indian, for example, well, I mean, I still play the Nimzo Indian, but rather, I should say, against Knight of 3, I do not play the Bogo Indian. I might play this occasionally, like, a Blitz game or something, you know, but primarily what I will do is I'll play d5, and after Knight c3, play the, what we'd call the Rogozin after Bishop b4, a very solid and dynamic opening defense for black. But one of the main reasons that, you know, I'm picking this, not something like, again, the bishop a6, queen's indian, or the bogo indian defense, is that those defenses are what I'd say are sort of fragile to these small changes in move orders, where it's like, it's great if white plays a sort of mainline move order, but if they do like sort of more of a sideline type thing and go knight of three and move one, it can be a lot more difficult to actually get these openings once again, this sort of fullest form on the board. Whereas in this position with the Rogozin, sorry, not knight c3, but you know, we can just play d5, and then when d4, bishop b4, and we have a full and complete 
transposition without having to deal with any of the bullshit along the way. But anyways, I hope this video has been useful for you guys. This is something that I wish I sort of learned about a bit earlier than I did, to be honest. It would have saved me a bit of troubles. Maybe it wasn't a complete life changer, but definitely would have helped. But anyways, uh, before I even tell you to like and subscribe, leave a comment down below and ask about your opening. You play against 1d4 if you have any questions. I'll be happy to get around to that and answer. Aside from that, the usual like, subscribe if you're not already for more content like this. And also if you're interested in coaching, I have a link in the description below, form you can fill out, and also my free newsletter down in the description below for people who want my articles about these sort of chess improvement topics. But anyways, hope you guys have a good day. I will see you until next time.